All right, today we'll be talking about Dibrogli's hypothesis and the significance of his findings uh, to the chemical world. Dibrogli's hypothesis states that particles of matter, such as electrons, have wavelengths and as a result can behave like waves while maintaining particle properties. In uh, 1924, D. Broglie wrote a thesis for the Faculty of Science at the University of Paris. Uh, this contained very important findings from about two years of research. Uh, what he discovered about the behavior of electrons revolutionized our understanding of physical phenomena at the atomic level. De Broglie himself was unable to confirm his theory experimentally, which left many people skeptical. Fortunately, three years later, in 1927, C.J. Davison and J.P. Thompson were both able to confirm De Broglie's theory in two separate experiments. Okay, so here's some important terms and definitions that you need to know if you want to, you know, examine these experiments further and know exactly what they're talking about. So first we have duality. Uh, it's an instance of opposition or contrast between two concepts. Uh, secondly, there's diffraction, this proce the, the process by which a beam of light or system of waves is spread out as a result of passing through a narrow gap. Then you have a matter wave. Uh, it's a hypothetical wave that is seen when particles are diffracted through a crystal. Finally, there's quantum mechanics, which is the motion and interaction of subatomic particles. And then fi finally, you have wavelength, which is the distance between two identical points on a wave. Three years after De Broglie created his hypothesis, it is now time for two other scientists to confirm his theory. In 1927, in order to confirm De Broglie's theory, Davison bounced electrons off a piece of solid nickel crystal and observed the angle at which the electrons diffracted. So here is the electron source, and here is a variable voltage which accelerates the electrons, which shoots electrons through a certain path, which bounces off a piece of nickel and is deflected onto the detector plate. This angle shown here was calculated using Bragg's formula, which is shown right there. Um, Bragg's formula is dependent on the wavelength, which is that variable there called lambda. The wavelength itself was determined from de Broglie's formula, which he generated. Therefore, um, when they conducted this experiment, the angle that was shown experimentally was the same that was shown theoretically. And as a result, they confirmed that de Broglie's formula um, does in fact work in the real world. Um, this experiment proved that the Broglie's formula successfully calculated the wavelength of an electron by confirming De Broglie's earlier hypothesis. This gave a strong footing for the idea of wave-particle duality and represented a major step forward in the development of quantum mechanics. In that same year, G.P. Thompson conducted his own experiment in order to confirm that electrons can act like a wave. In order to prove De Broglie's theory, Thompson accelerated electrons through a potential difference, which is a change in voltage, in order to, into a positive electrode through which a small hole was drilled. This produced a narrow beam of electrons, which were then directed towards a piece of gold foil, which diffracted the electrons and produced a diffraction pattern shown in figure two. This experiment confirmed that electrons have a mass, electrons of mass do have wave properties. Uh, here is the pattern that was shown from his experiment, um, which confirmed that mass can act like a wave, the same with the way a photon of light acts like a wave. All right, so next we have Klaus Johnson's experiment. In, uh, 20, in 1924, de Broglie had proposed the idea that electrons, which had been previously thought of as material particles, may also have uh, properties like that of a wave. Uh, these properties you know, can be thought of as frequency and wavelengths. Skip to 1927, and the idea of the wave nature of electrons was experimentally tested and given, uh, given merit by Davison and Thompson. Um, however, to demonstrate the idea to uh, his colleagues and to the general public, a variation of Young's double slit experiment was used. Instead of shining a light through a double slit, uh, a beam of electrons was fired at it. So in 1961, uh, Klaus Johnson uh, actually conducted this very experiment. By demonstrating that an interference pattern was formed, as shown in figure three, uh, this definitively proved that electrons, although particles, do exhibit wave-like properties. This is shown through uh, the interference pattern. So here are the uh, destructive areas, where it forms dark areas. And then you have uh, the constructive uh, areas of the pattern, which give the uh, bars of uh, light. So next, significance. Uh, de Broglie's hypothesis and the results found from the corresponding experiments drastically changed the world's understanding of the atom. Prior to de Broglie's hypothesis, it was understood that all matter is treated as a particle, which was theorized by Bohr and his equations. However, de Broglie stated that matter has wave and particle properties, which is also known as a duality. As a result, there was a great development in the understanding of quantum mechanics and further refinement of Bohr's theories of the structure of the atom. Prior to de Broglie's wavelength, scientists believed that electrons moved around the nucleus in a fixed
face time like that. However, uh, the definition of orbit was revolutionized by the de Broglie wavelength state because the de Broglie wavelength states that the electrons move around the nucleus in a wave-like pattern like this, sure, occupying a realm of space, not a de definite path. There were some problems with the results, however. The initial concern with de Broglie's hypothesis was the complexity and abstract nature of the theory in comparison to the understood behavior of particles during the time period. With little to no tangible evidence, scientists of the time struggled to support de Broglie until his theory was proven experimentally by Davison and Thompson. So next we have interesting facts. So in order to visualize matter as a wave, experiments need to be conducted with very small particles such as electrons. This is due to the fact that de Broglie's equation states that the wavelength of an object is equal to Planck's constant, which is this number right here. <clears throat> that is then divided by the mass of the moving object and multiplied by its velocity. Therefore, if one were to attempt to determine the wavelength of a one kilogram ball moving at one meter per second, the wavelength of the ball would be so incredibly small, a septillionth of a nanometer, that nothing would be detected. Now this is all tied into, uh, this constant in multiplying this by velocity is all tied into this equation right here. All right, uh, de Broglie made some important contributions during like his research. Um, one thing is, when the French Academy became aware of his um, theory of electron waves, it caught Albert Einstein's attention, and this kind of helped expi inspire the uh, birth of wave mechanics. And another thing is, uh, Broglie's theory resolved in, and offered an explanation to a question that was brought up by calculations of the motion of electrons within the atom. It was later independently proven in 1927 by G.P. Thompson and Clinton Davidson and Lester Germer that matter actually could show wave-like characteristics. Um, de Broglie won the 1929 Nobel Prize in Physics for his amazing work. So significance, de Broglie's hypothesis and the results found from the corresponding experiments drastically changed the world's understanding of the atom. Prior to de Broglie's hypothesis, it was understood that all matter is treated as a particle, which was theorized by Bohr and his equations. However, de Broglie stated that the matter has wave and However, de Broglie stated that the matter has wave and... Oh my fuck! <laughs>